person on earth. A person who believes in nothing will believe in anything. I wonder whether a nation that believes in nothing is also in such a dangerous position. And one can see that played out in so many uh, different ways. But as we look at the issue of uh, faith, politics and public engagement, how do we deal with a society that seems to have no values? I remember with the opening of the Graham Clark Institute, uh, I, uh, that had been about the time of those uh, riots in the UK and there were burnings and, uh, uh, and we heard people making, uh, uh, young people who were doing the rioting and doing the burning, making various comments about, uh, well, why not? You know, it's the stores broken into, why shouldn't I get my share? Uh, and, and we were all appalled by that. It was the same time, by the way, that the body politic in the UK was going through some dreadful things of its own, as MPs were found to have used public monies uh, for the most gross of personal purposes, uh, doing moats around their houses, uh, of all things. But, but generally speaking, going beyond any reasonable interpretation of what should happen, and what we saw was an absence of values in both. And so how can we deal with that absence of values? Secondly, one of the points we may want to, want to do is consider the world in which we live, Australia, or South Australia, or Adelaide. But we don't live just there. We live in a world much wider than that. And if we look at the much wider world, it might need to change the way we deal with certain issues. Understandably, we are concerned about asylum seekers and the border protection issues, and uh, we're concerned about uh, people coming to this country uh, uninvited. Uh, we're getting ourselves very concerned about between uh, 15 and 25,000 people a year who uh, are, seem to be doing that, coming into this country, many more by plane than by boat, but that gets lost in the debate. Uh, this is in a world where between half a million and a million asylum seekers a year are, are going to different parts of the world. Now I don't object to a, a country wanting to say we want to have some regulation or regularising of, of, of how our system operates. I have serious problems with what's currently happening, I have to tell you, but, uh, but the idea that governments may want to say we want to do things to control to some extent these movements, I don't argue with that. But it misses the point. Because at the moment we have one million people a week leaving the third world countryside taking their poverty and going to third world cities and living in megalopolises, urban slum cities, cities like Mumbai, where the slum population of Mumbai exceeds the combined population of Brisbane, Sydney and Melbourne. Now we're in our narrow focus view, getting ourselves really concerned and may I say, I believe doing great danger to our communal psyche by the way in which the debate has gone, over a small number of people, when the world has a million a week finding they can't survive in the countryside. Now, a Christian in politics needs to work out how we deal with that. How do we actually try and respond to a global issue? Because when we pray to God, he cares about the lot. He doesn't just care about what happens in our own patch. And so I believe it actually needs people in leadership not only listening to what the opinions are and responding to them, but actually seeking to change the direction of the wind to what it should be, to what God would have it to be. And so the issue of the global economy is not something we can walk away from. It's not something we can say somehow or other it's going to sort itself out or it's not my problem. Inasmuch Matthew 25 demands of it that it is our problem as well. The final current issue, and I have to say it's something I'm struggling with at the moment. I, I, I don't know what we should be doing and I leave it with you who I'm sure must also be struggling with it too. The situation we see in uh, Syria and Iraq, the, the persecution of uh, uh, 
religious minorities. And I actually had a friend today who's an atheist who contacted me. He said, also think about the atheists. And, well, of course, you know, nobody should be persecuted for their beliefs. Uh, then the, uh, the reported uh, uh, announcement that uh, all the women and girls of Mosul uh, mm. are to uh, be uh, have female genital mutilation. These are appalling things. And I can pray about that and do. I can be concerned about that and I am. But as I think of the topic faith, politics and public engagement, I have to tell you, I don't know what more I should be doing. And yet it's got to be something more than that. And so I want to leave you with that thought that if we are going to work out what faith, politics and public engagement really means, we actually have to take on the difficult things where it seems beyond any, anything easy for us to do. We have to go into that mist up on Mount Lofty and see what's through there in the mist. And the same applies to so many other crises that we have in the world at this moment. Israel and Gaza. Um, we can be deeply concerned about that. But we can't simply say, I can't do anything. Somehow we have to find out what it is we can do. That's not giving you an answer. Because I do not know. I'm really struggling with that myself at the moment. And trying to work out, God, what are you asking of me in these situations because I am a neighbor with those people.